Thanks for staying with us. It's no secret there's big money in lobbying, but here in Maryland, what is this big money getting us, Henry? Well, you know, having been in Annapolis and been involved with the lobbying culture, um, because what I previously did, we, we paid for a firm to lobby on our behalf, it, it gets you access, it gets you ears, and believe it or not, when you go to step in, into someone's office, they have already pulled up on their computer, whether you are a contributor to, the, to them or not, and that probably determines how much time you might actually get to bend on their ear, because they're busy. I understand Is that, that. a fact or is that an opinion? Uh, maybe a little both. Okay. Maybe uh. a little both. Um, it, it's worse in D.C. than it is in Annapolis, but, you know, when I was prepping for tonight's uh, episode, I, I looked at the, the raw materials. I was like, I know this guy. I know this guy. I know this firm. I know that firm. They're successful, and they're, there's a reason for it. It becomes a, a, a really strong network. And if someone who's representing us has a question on a policy, I would much rather than pick up the phone and call the given lobbying association and say, I have a question, can you explain that? Instead of making 25 phone calls to someone in the local community that they're not real sure about what is in the best interest of the business or of the individual citizen in, the, in our state. So um, if you look at if you look at what we spend just in Maryland, or what has been spent just in Maryland, um, there were 11 industries that spent over half a million dollars on lobbying efforts. At the top of the list is, guess what? Healthcare, $4,525,000. Um, we have business groups like the Chamber, and I'm assuming, and we have a community lobbying coalition in Washington County that involves several organizations, one of which is the Chamber of Commerce. Um, in total, not Washington County, right. but in total in Maryland, those business groups, including chambers and, and, and other types of things, have, have spent $1,190,000. Um, telecom spent $784,000. Transportation, $664,000. Um, automobile, six hundred and sixty, dollars And educational, $516,000. This is a huge amount of money, and it's unfortunate, but, you know, this, uh, the money, I'm afraid, does get you access, and I'm not sure that's the way it, it's supposed to work, but yeah. the fact of the matter is, it does. I mean, access to politicians is important. I mean, you want to know what they think, and they, the politicians want to know what the businesses think, but at the end of the day, they have to vote yes or no on the question on the floor, and you, gotta, you have to believe that they're influenced by, well, by the know, contributions and... I think a lot of it filters up. You know, if you have a trade organization that has, you know, in, in my case, we had uh, 30 members. And 30 members aren't going to be able to get access to everyone down in Annapolis during a given session. But the lobbying association, we host a mixer with other groups. So they would have a chance and we could rub elbows and, and talk to them on opening day or how, you know, what, whatever time it was. But we knew that we could express what our concerns were and that we would have an open ear to hear. So it, it's, you know, like Donald Trump was say, you know, saying during the campaigns, he knows how the system works. He's been part of the system and doling out money to get what he needs to get. I'm not saying politicians are bought, but I think money does influence some of the decisions, but it also provides them the ability to get knowledge that in a given industry that they may not have a specialty yet. So at the federal level, if you look at the top 10 lobbying spenders for the first quarter, this is just one quarter of 2015, $64 million spent influencing Congress on their way of thinking. And those include, and business tops the list here, Chamber of Commerce, $13,800,000. Um, National Association of Realtors, $7,700,000. Get this one. Google spent five million four hundred and seventy thousand dollars keep the internet free in lobbying efforts and general electric another private company for or well public company four million seven hundred fifty thousand dollars that's a lot of money guys and and it, what what does google do for five million four hundred and seventy thousand dollars what are they trying to do Can no keep idea. the internet free maybe I, internet free i bet it's uh, more than that initiatives i bet it's more than that though yeah. not release their records to uh, the government entities that's true, too, yeah. There's a lot going on here. And, you know, at some level, again, I don't think that's the way the system was supposed to be 
But it, we're, we're living in a perpetual election cycle, and they have to have a way to fund re-election. But this isn't even about re-election. This is just about influence. Exactly. But the money has to go somewhere. So the money is being put into the pot, and it's churning well, up. You and talk about the federal level. There's not a whole lot of legislation coming out of Congress, and this money just goes somewhere. Yeah. It doesn't produce any results as of right now. Well, it goes in maybe a congressman's freezer for uh, uh, a rainy day. Right. All right. That'll be the last word on that. Up next, Fast Five. Stay tuned.